excited to have this first guy coming at you. He's the host of a very funny podcast, a very informative too. It's called True Crime Loser. So everybody give a big ease bar welcome to Mr. Scott Sharp. All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Crime. Sir, I hope you're doing well. So, folks, long time no see again. My wife ended up having a minor surgery, which went great, totally recovered, back in tip top. But now I really got to figure out a rhythm with the show again, or your old pal Scotty Boy is going to be broke. So, but anyway, a decision was made late last week that I was interested in. The judge in the Gwyneth Paltrow Terry Sanderson seven year skiing collision lawsuit saga made the big decision that Terry Sanderson would not be on the hook to repay Gwyneth Paltrow's attorney fees, which you gotta think are staggeringly expensive. The whole thing went for almost a decade. And by the end of it, Terry was, his side was asking for $3.2 million. Jesus, Terry. And Gwyneth, her side was countersuing for a symbolic $1 plus the attorney fees, which that's a big difference. If you're Terry Sanderson, is it going to be just $1 or $1 plus almost a decade of staggeringly expensive attorney fees? And the jury had to make two decisions. Who were they ruling in favor of as far as the lawsuit goes? They ruled in Gwyneth's favor, so... Terry, pay this woman her dollar. But also they had to decide, which turned out to be hilarious, what percentage at fault were each party. They could have ruled in Gwyneth's favor, but also said, that being said, we do think she was 10% responsible for the collision, 20% responsible. But the jury deliberated for barely enough time to use the bathroom and the drinking fountain came back and said, not only are we ruling in Gwyneth's favor, but we think this whole thing was 100% Terry's fault cuts to Terry looking beyond pathetic. I feel like that was a message from the jury. Go home, Terry. My God, seven years you're dragging everybody through this nonsense, wasting everybody's time and money and sanity and life, Terry. He's, make no mistake about it, Terry is a scary little man. And then it was the judge's decision whether or not Terry had to cough up the money for the attorney fees. And two weeks after the trial ended, late last week, the judge came out and said, Terry does not have to pay legal fees. He did not comment how he made that decision or why he made that decision. And I think I understand why the judge made it. He's a 76-year-old little worm of a man, probably would wipe him out financially, but man, there should be some deterrent to bringing a seven-year frivolous lawsuit. I would have maybe made him pay 5000 I don't know if that's an option, 10000 something. It's scary, the thought you can be jerked around for seven years by a Terry Sanderson, and when it's all said and done, just, yeah, well, oh, well, I'll go back to my, my old life. And Terry, he really tried to put forth that this whole thing is so hard, and it's hard to sue a celebrity. It really is. I wouldn't wish this on anyone anybody and you get exposed and everybody pays attention to you and talks about you on the news and everything Terry was saying was this is so hard but Terry's little micro expressions and all of his body language said the complete opposite. Terry was having the time of his life. This was the most exciting most infamous, most attention this man will ever get, and he was soaking up every minute of it. And little parts during the trial, you could see a glimpse into the real Terry Sanderson, into this man's personality, and it is a weird place. One of the most ridiculous parts of the entire trial is Terry Sanderson is up on the stand, and he's saying something like, and I felt I was really injured. And I felt someone needed to be held accountable. And if someone wasn't held accountable, they're just going to do it again. Now we have children being molested on an island. It's like, did you just 
try to compare your little old man skiing accident to the Epstein case. And when he said that, Gwyneth's lawyer, rightfully so, goes, I object. This is ridiculous testimony, Your Honor. And the, the judge agreed and said, sustained jury disregard what Terry is saying. And it's one thing to have that thought alone in your apartment if you're Terry. You know what? This is actually a lot like the Epstein case. If you think about it, there's a connection. Yes. Yes, it's very similar. I am like the kid and Gwyneth Paltrow is like Epstein on the island. Oh my gosh, it's one thing to have that absurd thought alone in your a little apartment. It's another thing to think, I'm going to get up on the stand and what, with the whole world watching, make the Epstein connection and to the jury. And then the jury's going to go, oh my God. Oh my God, we didn't even see the Epstein connection until you said that. Yes, he's right. If you think about it, this is a lot like the Epstein case. Wow. All right. Yeah, we have to rule in Terry's favor because if not, then there could be a whole nother Epstein situation happening. Totally absurd to make that argument and to think it's going to work and come off as brilliant or a good point in court is something else. And then what's funny about that too is after Terry did that, we have children being molested on an island and then Gwyneth lawyer object. This is ridiculous. Sustain disregard what Terry said. Terry's lawyer goes, no further questions. As if they just hit a big good point and punched everybody out. Usually you want to end the testimony with, a good point that makes the jury go, huh, yeah, you know what, that really is a decent point. Okay, yeah, and end it with a big no further questions. Terry goes on an island, and then the judge goes, disregard what Terry said, and then the, the lawyer, no further questions, as if they had just hit it out of the park. That female lawyer that Terry had, another bizarre part of the case is when Gwyneth was up on the stand, she wanted Gwyneth to get off the stand and for her, the lawyer, and Gwyneth to reenact the skiing collision. The lawyer was going to get up, press herself up behind Gwyneth with her legs right there, touching Gwyneth, and they were going to reenact the thing, and Gwyneth would have looked miserable. And Gwyneth's lawyer, again, rightfully so, was like, no, she doesn't have to get off the stand and get touched by this lady. And that to me came off of this lawyer wants those images of her up there pressed against Gwyneth. They would have been become iconic images, especially in this attorney's little life. She could have framed them, put them up when her, her career is all said and done. She's sitting by the fireplace, looking back on her career, looking at these pictures, but it, it was not a good look to... Why don't you step down, Gwyneth, and we'll reenact this. It's like, why don't we not? Get away from me, you weird lawyer. I can't imagine how much Terry spent on his lawyers. He had, what, four lawyers throughout this whole thing? Four or five lawyers? And also, unrelated, they were huge. His lawyers... Was Those men were gigantic. I was sitting there going, he probably has 2,500 pounds worth of lawyers sitting there. I thought we were going to hear a creak in the floor and his whole side, all the lawyers and everything fall through the floor and there's a perfect outline of the lawyers in the table and everybody else in the courtroom still up there is just looking at each other, blinking. And another wild part of ter about Terry Sanderson is his case, a big part of the case that his lawyers were making is everybody hates Terry. No one can stand to be around him. His friends don't want to be around him. His kids won't pick up the phone when he calls. All the women in his life has bailed. Everybody hates him. He, he volunteered for this place, and even the head of the volunteer place was getting really mad at him. You know your personality is, ins is insufferable when you're volunteering and the person running the show goes, you know what, Terry, it might, you might help more if you don't come and volunteer. Sorry, it's just... 
and they were using that. Everybody hates Terry. It's got to be because of Gwyneth Paltrow. Surely it's because of Gwyneth Paltrow and not Terry's personality and being a little schemer, scammer, worm of a man that's dragging out this frivolous lawsuit for almost a decade. No, it has to be the skiing accident with Gwyneth. Surely it does, right? That makes the most sense to us. The, his lawyer was made the joke of we can barely stand to be around Terry. He's paying us. We have to be around him because we're his lawyer, but we can barely stand to be around him. And it would cut to Terry sitting there just going, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> That's just a funny case. Yeah, everybody hates him. And so that must be because of Gwyneth Paltrow. It's a weird spot to be. But it makes sense why Terry went through with this whole thing and kept at it, even though it was a really embarrassing. The whole thing, I'm sure his friends and family and kids are going, this is why we don't want to be around you, Terry, because you're of this type of stuff. This is, you're not making yourself look great with this whole thing. And I think that without this lawsuit, Terry's life is pretty slow and boring. No one wants to hang out with him. All the women are gone. And so all of a sudden, though, with this lawsuit, there's a reason to get up and to put a suit on and we, okay, we got a meeting with the lawyers and we're strategizing and they're talking about him on TV. Okay, good or bad, they're talking about him and he's getting all this attention and he's walking out of the courtroom and everybody wants to hear his, his thoughts and, he, and ask him questions. This is the most exciting and notorious and infamous and relevant this man is ever going to be. And whether it was conscious or not, Terry was soaking it up and loving every minute of it. And you're just not going to convince people, yeah, everybody hates him because of the Gwyneth collision. Okay, so what else? Okay, so what I think after watching most of the trial, I think what happened is Terry, if you boil this whole thing down... Terry's a 70-year-old man that went downhill skiing and got hurt. That's to be expected. He's 70 years old. And the one witness to the collision even said, Terry's ability to go skiing has really dropped off quickly. He used to be a really good skier, and all of a sudden he's not. And something about Terry's personality is it doesn't seem like he could accept that he was slowing down as he got into his 70s. A lot of people age gracefully. And yeah, I can't go skiing anymore. I used to be a great skier, but I'm just too old. Something about Terry's personality. I don't know if he has some sort of mental disorder or what, but there's a block when it comes to I'm not as physically capable as I used to be. And I think that's a big part of this whole thing. I think he was skiing down. He's an old man now. And I think he knows he crashed into Gwyneth. But in his head, I think he thinks, Gwyneth got in my line. I was skiing down this line. It was obvious where I was going. Gwyneth wasn't paying attention at all. Skied right into it. Probably when Terry was younger, he would have made an athletic skiing move and missed her. But he's a 70-year-old man. Oh, I can't do it. Oh. And he crashes into her. He gets hurt. He's an old man going downhill skiing. What do you expect? Gwyneth, which I think supported Gwyneth's case, was like, dude, you slammed into me. God, and skied off. Hey, stay, had, had the skiing instructor stay with this guy. He just rammed into me. You stay with him, make sure he's okay. But Terry, that really made Terry furious. He thought I was laying there. He said he was unconscious face down in the snow for four minutes, which, which comes off like Amber Heard going, I shattered my nose. But he, you know, he's laying there hurt. He thinks she should have stayed here with me and saw if I was okay. I was sitting there with a broken rib and she just, she skis in my line 
and then leaves. I'm hurt, and she doesn't have to do anything. That's not fair. This was a hit and run. His whole case for the longest time was it was a hit and run. She left without checking, and then but the judge threw all that out, and then so they had to switch the whole thing to this like everybody his whole life everybody hates him now because of the head injury that he got they had to sort of pivot and change their whole case but the whole thing has something to do with his inability to come to terms with he's just not as physically able as he was when he's younger that's something and there was a lot of weird takes on this case like i wanted to watch terry's testimony again so i typed in searched it on youtube and the top recommended video was dr grande's video on the terry sanderson gwyneth paltrow case and the title i guess it was a successful title because it got me to click but the title of grande's video was what was it it was nonsense peddling lifestyle guru defeats starstruck collision causer and I'm thinking to let Terry, this little scammer, worm, frivolous lawsuit to soak up the attention, can't come to terms with that he's getting older and he seems totally oblivious to think that that's even a possibility that in his 70s he would slow down. To let him off the hook and simplify it down to a starstruck collision causer while ripping on Gwyneth, that's a strange take. And so, like I said, it's a successful title because I he got me to click on the video. And then right at the beginning of the video, Grande kind of gives himself away that he has, I don't know, rage in his soul towards Gwyneth. Something's up because the first thing he talks about, he goes, out of everything you could talk about of this whole seven-year frivolous lawsuit, he decides to start with... Yeah, Gwyneth was an actress, and she had a productive beginning of her career, then faltered, and then was able to revive her career to some extent. Grande, what are you talking about? She was in 50 movies. She won an Oscar. She won a Golden Globe. She won a Primetime Emmy. She was in every genre you could think of. Comedy. Drama action she did it all she did period pieces she did big budget studio movies all the way down to art little art movies you can't do it any better what most people that decide you know what i want to be an actor i think i could do it every time i'm in a room with a bunch of actors i'm the best one i think i could make this a career i'm gonna do it I'm going to become an actor. Most of those people don't even make it into a toothpaste commercial, let alone a lead role in anything, let alone 50 lead roles in everything you could possibly imagine, win all the awards. Imagine having that whole career as Gwyneth Paltrow doing, just thinking there's literally nothing else I could possibly do as an actress, I did it all. I won all the awards. I did all the types of movies. I don't really feel like being on a movie set all day anymore. It's rough. I can't think of a carrot to chase anymore. I think I'm going to do something else. And to have some dweeb like Dr. Grande go, you know, her career was productive but faltered. You said, Grande said that her career was productive but faltered 20 seconds after asking people to join his Patreon. I mean, Gwyneth doesn't have to ask people to join her Patreon, Grande, like you and me. So I would say that you want to rip on her for being the lifestyle guru, whatever, who cares. But to describe her acting career as anything other than a total grand slam to win the game couldn't really go any better came off as a little bit weird and then so his video is he pretty much rips on Gwyneth or tries to roast her for the first part but then does admit that it was a frivolous lawsuit so it's like is that is your take that because she's weird who cares this guy can just jerk her around for seven years and he just who cares because she's has a lifestyle company that's wildly successful that is not the same as being a PhD. 
PhD in counseling like Dr. Grande. And then also in Dr. Grande's video, he says that Terry Sanderson does have to pay her attorney fees. It's just wrong. And then he also is speculating that when Gwyneth was up on the stand and said she thought it was a sexual thing at first, like all, all of a sudden this guy's slammed up behind her, touching her, the skis are through her legs. And she said, at first I thought it was a sexual thing. Like this guy was planning to like, I'm going to make sure I crash into Gwyneth. That's Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm going to make sure I crash, feel her up. Like things like that happened all the time. And so it's obviously Grande didn't watch the trial because in his video he was going, she thought it was a sexual thing. I think he was taken, or I think she was taking a shot at Terry up on the stand by doing that. But it may be that shot she was taking worked because the jury went in her favor. It's like, Grande, if you were to watch the trial, she said actually that she thought for a second that it was a sexual thing right when it was at there, when they were touching and everything, but then quickly realized it wasn't and it was just a ski collision. Grande didn't know that part, so he was speculating why maybe she said that without even knowing. She goes, but that was just for a second. Then I figured out that it wasn't. So it would have been interesting when I clicked on Grande's video, I was thinking it, it would be interesting to hear what a PhD in counseling has to say about a Terry Sanderson, a guy that has that scammer personality that can't seem to... Uh, come to terms with the fact that he's getting older someone that would get into that skiing accident and go home and write his local paper someone that tries to make the whole thing connected to the Epstein it would have been interesting to have Grande break that down and to simplify it and let Terry Sanderson off the hook is just the a, a starstruck collision causer it's like great video I don't know kind of makes the whole thing worth worthless and check out these Dr. Grande roast jokes. You really burned her. You really got Gwyneth. He goes, she's also known for her company called Goop. The name of this company would be more consistent with its behavior if it started with a P instead of the letter G. The old letter switch gag. Yeah. Great. That's... It's good stuff. You really toasted Gwyneth. And then there's another one at the end. Right when it ended and Gwyneth won, she stood up and walked out and leaned over and said something to Terry. And everyone at first was like, what did she say? She ended up just wishing him well. But here's another grande roaster. This may have just been an attempt to be gracious and bury the hatchet, or it could have been a euphemism for a two-word phrase concluding with the word you, not thank you, although the first word also ends with the letter K. A lot of words in these grande jokes. Nothing like a wordy grande joke, but pretty wild case when you think about it. They called it the most watched case since Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. I thought Gwyneth represented herself throughout the whole thing really well. I thought Terry exposed himself for what he really is. But scary guy, those frivolous lawsuits, what can you do? You're sort of just stuck. It's legal stalking and it attaches. He attached himself, whether Gwyneth liked it or not, to her story and something else. But I'm going to cut it off there. I will see you guys soon. Why? Stabbing why? Shamita.